Gentlemen of YouTube, I'm Chucky2009, and I'm out here with Shlee Tiger. <laughs> Shneetika77, Peter Zila. All right, uh, Zila Industrial Repairs, and today we're going to be talking about MIG welding, specifically how to calculate your wire feed speed, uh, you know, with a machine that instead of having inches a minute on the dial or the display, it has a gauge from like 10 to 100 or 1 through 10, and we're going to be talking about how to determine exactly what voltage you're, uh, you're welding with. So, all right, how are we going to be doing this? We will need something to measure and the length of the wire and something to measure the voltage that the machine puts out. Okay. So, if you have a machine that does not have digital readouts, you pick the numbers on the dial and you measure what wire feed speed you have at each individual number. Okay. So, in order to do this, you'll need a stopwatch and you need your welding machine. You dial your welding machine in to one. All right. And at one, you let the wire run out of the gun for exactly six seconds, which is a tenth of a minute. Then multiply it by 10, whatever wire you got, this That's will give you minute. the inches and a minute. Yeah, okay. So. Start the clock. Right. So, at setting one, we have zero inches a minute. <laughs> I don't think that worked. I think it did work. You think it did work here? I think it did work. I'll just turn this all the way up, give it a nice pull. All right, on 10. All right. You're on 10. On 10, Yep, yeah, look at it go, look at it go, look at it go. Woo! Five. Yep, it's working, all right. One is pretty much zero on that machine. Actually, I don't think it has a zero, it just has a one. All right, well that explains that. Oh, look at that wire. He's got the old fashioned measuring stick, which isn't quite long enough. Here. 720 inches a minute, plus another 10. So we can say about 800, 820 inches a minute on setting number 10. All right. So setting 10 is going to be about 800, 820. Cool. Now what advantage is this going to have as opposed to using like a plain old door chart for instance? If you weld critical welds, or specialty wire, not your, just your generic uh, tractor supply, farm and fleet wire. You have, the manufacturer typically makes a book with all his welding consumables for hard facing wire, for stainless wire, for aluminum wire, for f flux cord or metal cord wire, gas shielded or self shielded. And these people put a lot of engineering and time into those and find out which wire works best at what speed okay. and what heat. So what they do is they give you a chart for 30 thousandths wire diameter if you weld it in short circuit transfer which is the one that sounds like bacon frying <laughs> with 100% argon your contact tip to work distance is supposed to be between 3 eighths and half inch and at like 300 inches a minute you're running 22 volts and this will result in an approximate 130 amps and you will be melting off 1.6 kilogram or 3.6 pounds of wire per hour. So at this setting it would take you three hours trigger pull time to go through a 10 pound spool. Awesome. All right, cool. So this is just a way to be a little bit more precise and uh, apparently, well, we also learned that one is zero on this machine and 10 is, well, a lot of wire. All right, next up, let's talk about voltage. Voltage. Every, every welding machine has voltage settings. If the voltage setting cannot be displayed digitally, you can always measure it with a voltmeter. The way how you do this is, you have to tie these two prongs into the positive and the negative, into the ground clamp or the gun, or any, any screw where the hot wire for the gun is attached to. Like the polarity things? Like the polarity things, yeah. All right, in fact, here. Let's go ahead and do that. We got the old Hobart 187. As you can see, there's no digital readout and it doesn't tell you voltage. Well, it's got like a one to seven tapped voltage thing. 
If but. you if you dial the voltmeter to voltage and you put it about right here, direct current voltage, and you switch it on, and then you can tie this right into these two tabs, the positive and the negative. Okay. And the moment that you pull the trigger and you start welding, it will read the actual voltage the machine is welding with. Okay. Let me show this on this 2400 here. All right. You want me to shut her off real quick? No, don't shut her off. Okay. <laughs> we will tie. We will tie the negative right into the ground clamp, into the copper wire right here, and the positive we can put. We can put inside. We can put inside the gun lead. Actually, okay. the gun lead has in the middle the liner mm -hmm. where the steel wire goes through. On the outside, there's copper braided wire in it that transports the current to the contact tip here in front that puts the current into the wire. Okay. So the best thing is to go right to the copper on the outside. There. And now, okay. why don't you turn the wire speed down to about five? All right. Wire feed five. And the voltage tabs is on four and four, which means this is heat setting 22 out of 24. But of course, we want to know how many volts this is. So, what we will do is. Assuming we don't have this handy dandy readout, we will. You want me to hold that? Oh, yeah. yeah you, don't you, miss. you just. Look at you just look at the uh, voltmeter as I'm striking the arc. Okay. And you see we're about at 24, 24 and a half volts. Cool. So now with these settings, we can adjust the settings and for different settings, write down the different voltages. So we will know at what voltage tap setting we have what actual voltage there and we will know at what wire feed speed we will have what wire speed there so we can dial in every wire every specialty wire everything where it's really critical to have the correct amount of heat and wire speed to guarantee like x-ray quality welds mm -hmm. so you're saying like a door chart like this this is fine for some things but if you want to be a little bit more precise or maybe your door chart doesn't cover the uh specific type of wire you're running like this is all mild steel if I was putting some stainless wire through it yep. or like some hard surfacing wire you know that's not going to be covered your settings would change yeah and, and the, the most accurate way to look up the settings is go right back to the wire manufacturer and they give you recommendations of how to use it in the appropriate way to get the best results the door chart will get you close and you have to tweak a little bit from there it's a generic chart for a generic wire but if you're looking to do something more special something where you want to have a way the job is more demanding where the outcome is more critical you might want to think about going with actual numbers actually lab tested from real engineers that develop the wire that make the strength testing and tell you what would work best to do this. Lincoln Electric put a lot of time and money and research into figuring out exactly where their stuff runs the best. You know, same with the other manufacturers. That means that you don't have to. All right. <laughs> cool. Well, let's, let's go about. finish Cover the chart up. All right. Awesome. We'll be there in no time. Yeehaw. Thanks for watching, everybody. A big thank you to Peter Zila. And, uh, yeah, have a nice night, everybody. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. <laughs>